Yes has been a registered professional forester. Her home was featured on the Rotary Garden Tour. She is a past president of the Rotary Club of Chilliwack, and her experience includes nonprofit housing. She was a candidate in the 2018 Chilliwack City election. She plays a ukulele, and she is an environmental educator and enthusiast, being among the many other hats that she wears. Tonight, please welcome Deborah Souter, and this is Point of View. Deborah, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you, Lily? Good, this is great. And uh, when you arrived today, too, the first thing we said was, oh my God, I haven't seen you like, like in a long time, and like it has been a long time. And we both ran in the uh, last city election in 2018. And, um, but I think we just travel in different circles. Right? Must be, because yeah. you're out there, and I'm out there. Yeah. And so this is, here we go again, right? Is it uh, two times lucky? Like, what do you think, uh, you know, what has changed really since then between Deborah then running and Deborah now running? I hope it isn't just luck. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the 2018 election, I was still really enthusiastic. I was still pumped up thinking, this is a great thing. This is something I should be doing. Mm -hmm. So I have spent the last four years preparing for this year. Yeah. I've become more involved in more activities, trying hard to be more recognized. That makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Honing my skills um, in administration and governance, trying to identify gaps and trying to fill them. Yeah, I always um, like to reflect, you know, and um, it's hard running. It takes a lot out of you. And, um, you know, after it's all over and, you know, maybe you might not, uh, you know, f finish at the top or you might not even be in the middle. You might be in the bottom. Um, I did bring the stats and uh, just to take a quick look, because I think it's important to realize where you're coming from. Right. And um, and what it's going to take to get to the finish line to get there, because we need you. We definitely need a, a woman's voice on there. Um, so what do you think about that? Like you're sitting a little bit. What, what do you need to get those votes? Do you think? I don't think that I need particularly need votes. Mm -hmm. I think that the whole community needs way more people to turn out. Yeah. I think the people who did not turn out, the people who did not vote are the people who would vote for me or somebody like me. Yeah. Um, I don't know why people don't vote, but I would really um, like to do what I could to encourage that, to make it worth your while. I understand when there's the thought that I don't make a difference. We mm -hmm. often, we feel that way sometimes about climate action and we just mm -hmm. can't do that. I really believe in the cumulative effect, the mathematics, that every person totally makes a difference. And when we find our allies, when we find our group, when we find our people and we mm -hmm. find out we're not alone, that there are a whole bunch of other people that think the same way that we do and would like to see the same kind of change that we'd like to see. Yeah, and I think it's a, a bit of a responsibility on us as well as voters and just examining the system that we have in place. Um, in that last election, I mean, you know, if you add it up, it was 24% of the votes actually went to women candidates. You know, can we be doing better? And, and if so, how? Uh, just one little um, tidbit on that is I remember asking because I hadn't run for city council, but I know federally you do get like sort of the voters list and we flush all that down the toilet. So like all this great data that's out there, don't you think we should be like using that to improve our, our uh, turnout at the election? We definitely should be able to maintain a voters list. We definitely should be able to identify who was voting and where they were voting from region, not by their name necessarily, but we would like to know the data. How can we um, make a change? We're still doing things the same old way without understanding the data. Yeah, so I definitely think um, you're on the right track with that one, and I don't know why in this age, because we depend on data to make decisions. Um, you know, the city also asks a lot of the opinion of of uh, the citizens in order to make those decisions and to spend money wisely. Um, you know, what other ideas do you think that we could implement, maybe, that uh, would help uh, voter turnout? Online voting mm -hmm. will make a huge difference. Um, online, everything has demonstrated to be very helpful over the past four years. It's given people the flexibility they need. Um, I think that there are a lot of people who have good intentions and they just couldn't fit it in their day or the day came and went and it was over. Yeah. Um, keeping things front of mind, that's my job. Mm -hmm. Making sure that 
everybody in my neighborhood and in my community knows that the election is October 15th mm -hmm. and you can vote ahead of time if that's more convenient um, and make it fun because mm -hmm. it's super easy. You just go in, put your mark. The hard part is the research ahead of time. And again, that's, as you say, is on us mm -hmm. to present ourselves, to pr provide the information about me instead of hiding it or glossing over it. If you need some digging deep information, you can call me and I can have a more um, fulsome conversation if you wish. Mm. The other thing about having fun with it is going with your friends, voting together, mm. um, celebrating afterward. Um, it, it's it's a, a simple activity that is really, really important and so you can celebrate it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, generally, and I think young people as well, um, think that, you know, like, you know, everyone else is going to make the decisions, right? You know, we do elect, um, you know, people to make those decisions, but while we have them in the booth, why don't we start asking them other things? Like, we can have other questions when we're getting people in there. I mean, wouldn't that be a better use of money as well? I agree. The surveys that the city has conducted over the last four years have been really helpful making the community members feel engaged. The next step, of course, is to implement that information, mm -hmm. not just take it and store it, but really analyze it and really try to use it to set priorities. Um, the part about, um, oh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I was uh, just gonna ask really, um, like, you know, when you're in, and I hope you are elected. Me too. The um, Now, what, what are some of the policies in place that I think that, you know, maybe we haven't done so well with? There's an interesting uh, couple of policy directives, J10 and J11, mm -hmm. and they should be rescinded. I don't know why they're sitting there. I remember when they were passed, and it was shocking to me at the time that the council felt that it was okay to not have flags and crosswalks that reflected other people's points of view, other people's perspectives, especially when they were they were so deep and meaningful and, and the presenters were so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, then I thought it should be re revisited, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't revisited and it wasn't revisited. Then this spring, council made an amazing decision to put up rainbow um, banners in the downtown mm -hmm. area. What a great step forward. Unfortunately, it puts council in contravention of their own policy directives. That's kind of mm. embarrassing, I think. Well, you know, how about those birds, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just... Um, oh, the little sculptures yeah, on the clock? Yeah, little pigeons or, you know, the, the colored pigeons. And anyway, so, you know, I think you know my train of thought on that as well as, you know, that is a policy that's not inclusive, right? So, you know, if we have a council that, you know, shows diversity, I think you're going to have policies that show diversity as well. We and need I, to I have just don't think we're First there. Nations representation on council. That's a huge one, especially in mm -hmm. our community. Yeah. We need the council to refl reflect the community. Yeah. And we know that diversity enriches things. In mm -hmm. nature, diversity gives you flexibility. It gives you more choices. Mm -hmm. It enriches your ecosystem. Well, the ecosystem of our community government mm -hmm. would be enriched if we had more diversity. So yeah. of course we need to have women on the team. And of course we need to have First Nations representation on the team. And many other kinds of people. Yeah, at the beginning, we have right? One kind like the, of people. the planning, at the planning stage. Definitely. Like, let's bring people in and, and uh, work together on this. And, and I know Ken definitely has done a really good job like better than where we were before. So yes. I always like to, you know, look at the data or, or look, you know, where we've come from, you know, and but there's still other areas that, that we need to go as well to be a progressive city. I know you've talked about expansion and how fast we were expanding in your last campaign as well. Do you think we're actually keeping up with the infrastructure? Definitely and we're, not. And, and we're, you know, doing everything while we're collecting more taxes in order to make this a viable and a great city to, uh, to live in. I totally support densification. Mm -hmm. When we have more people in our community, we have more economic viability. That was always a challenge before because Chilliwack was just mm -hmm. not big enough for the shops to be successful, for the services to be successful. Mm -hmm. The other part is that people want to live here and how nice to welcome them. More diversification, more different kinds of people with mm -hmm. all their talents and their dollars, etc. I don't necessarily agree with how things have been densified. Mm -hmm. When a perfectly good home 
is demolished to put yeah. in three homes that now nobody can afford. I shouldn't say nobody, but who is taking care of providing homes for people who need to rent mm -hmm. or for people who are starting out or for people who are at the other end, like myself at the, at the retirement age? Mm -hmm. I don't want to live in a four-bedroom, $2 million home with no backyard and no trees. Mm -hmm. um, proximity to schools, the, the roads for sure. And we see right now this time of year, of course, all the roads are torn up. Not mm -hmm. all of them, but there's a lot of construction sites. It's very challenging, and it's like a race against time trying to keep up with all the people who are coming. So I really would like to see us push the pause bit button just mm -hmm. a bit, revisit our official community plan, and see what are the parameters we want, set some priorities, yeah. and um, be willing to say no occasionally. It, I think that it's been pretty hard to say no to a developer because there's a lot of money Well, involved. our council has a lot of developers and sort of real estate people. Not and that you there's know, anything wrong we've been with focused, that. <laughs> we've been focused on that, though. Like, I've always, you know, wondered why aren't we doing, like, a certain percentage of, you know, building permits to how much money we're spending on infrastructure. Because it's, it's pretty crazy when, you know, you have to go from here to downtown and you're spending, like, 40 minutes. Yeah. Like, in, in the car. Like, yeah. really. Like, it, it's, it's a little crazy. It's a little bit better now that they've finished. Um, Vetter Road, at least for me, getting to downtown. But um, just quickly before we go to a break, I want to ask you about downtown because there's that has been probably the biggest significant visual oh, yeah. change that we've seen. What are your thoughts on uh, what we've done, um, what we can do, and um, you know maybe um, some of your suggestions? Well, I love the development. Mm -hmm. It's been sensitive, thoughtful, uh, wisely done, I would say. And it uh, is inspiring the adjacent blocks mm -hmm. to, to step up. Um, the city could be investing in that, supporting that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see the downtown be more walkable. Mm -hmm. Things like lower speed limits or even closing some streets on Sundays or those yeah. kinds of things to enhance that livability that we're starting to get a real nice taste for. Yeah. No, it sounds good. It looks wonderful. You know, and uh, I see more and more people down down there. I, I know some business owners down there. Um, my business was down there. Um, my chef had bought my business, and, and uh, things have really been good for him. Good. So actually having, like, a hub, like, with restaurants and stuff, brings more people. Yes. You know, people people used to think, oh, I don't want, you know, other restaurants there because it's going to be competition for me. That's not true. If there's more of that and there's more choice for people, more people will come, and that sort of, sort of seems to be the case. But I just want to step away for a quick quick little break uh, from our sponsor and then we're going to be uh, right back with Deborah. Welcome back. Uh, again, I'm with uh, Deborah Suter running for uh, uh, City Council. Uh, Deborah. Uh, what haven't we talked about late yet? How about, you know, this was kind of funny happening in the last elections. We had a bit of a sign war and and nobody really knew that, right? I mean, I remember getting a, an email said, you know, your signs are blocking mine and you're, you're close. And, you know, we were out measuring because literally like, <clears throat> especially at Five Corners, it was like boom, 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 boom. And if you were early and you had money, then your signs would be up. But if you had, you know, a little more difficulty or whatever sign shop was a little bit late, then you didn't get yours, you know, or your volunteers couldn't get them out till till later. So um, that was kind of fun, wasn't it? I mean, it, it was, you know, it, it was, it was, it wasn't mean. It was late. It was, yeah. And it was interesting. Yeah. Because went, hmm, mm -hmm. how do we deal with this? Yeah. And what is the problem? Is there a problem? Yeah. And, you know, I think it, it, it brought back like, what the heck are we doing? Like, all these signs anyway. Like, the city looks like it looks like a mess. It is an eyesore. And it's also a danger in a lot of um, different intersections. So do you think we should just get rid of signs altogether? We could limit signage much more. The city mm -hmm. of Coquitlam has much more restrictive bylaws. And it does help a lot. Yeah. They have more sign waving parties, mm -hmm. but way less clutter. Um and the environment, my goodness. Um, I'm concentrating this year. I mm -hmm. still have my same signs. Yep. Washed them up and stored them. And having them on private property. 
Nice. So that I hope that they'll be more meaningful. They'll say, that person mm -hmm. is supporting Deborah. That is a real person supporting Deborah. It's not somebody who drove down the street and plunked a whole bunch in yeah. to block your way on your way home. Um, yeah, I, I, I mind those too. Mm -hmm. And we could do better. We could, have, we could have more restrictions and we could emphasize other ways of getting your message out. I like mm -hmm. the in-person town hall thing where you could have a kiosk. Mm -hmm. I like social media. That's helped everybody a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, when I'm saying, you know, if we're collecting data and, and if we actually have an entity that, you know, monitors our elections, why don't we, like, start investing in into it? Like, investing, you know, have a page in the local paper that all the candidates can put their names. Like, just make it fair across the board. And then just be doing one things like that rather than, you know, having, you know, an environmental disaster and also, you know, a visual eyesore. Well, and visual uh, pollution is just as bad as others. As you said, it's a safety mm -hmm. issue. We're just dis we're distracted enough as it is. Yeah. And um, environment. Um, I know you're, you know, you're forestry. You've got a big background in that. But your house was also on the garden tour. Right. So yes, that's uh, my old house. T tell everyone a bit about that because you're pretty amazing. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I lived in a beautiful property right in town, and uh, a heritage type of house on a uh, half an acre plus beside the river. So it was a little paradise tucked right in town, and I enjoyed the gardening. It came with mature trees. I'm a big supporter of protecting large trees. Did you know that Chilliwack does not have a tree protection bylaw? Oh, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. So if you had a giant, beautiful tree in your mm -hmm. front yard, you could cut it down with impunity. Nobody can stop you. Mm -hmm. And we're the only municipality in the mm -hmm. Fraser Valley like that. Others require you to have a sober second thought before you cut down that gorgeous old tree because mm -hmm. at a certain point it becomes a community asset. And I felt that way about my garden. I felt that mm -hmm. at some point, I want to share this. This yeah. is this is for more people to enjoy than just me. So it was a pleasure to be on the Rotary Garden Tour. Yeah, th that's a great idea. So we we should see a motion coming forward. I hope so. I I proposed the bylaw twice and really? it got shut down. Why though? I don't understand that. The thought was that the existing tree bylaw that's tied to development would mm -hmm. be adequate, and it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it is not. Um, people are still allowed to top. Uh, conifers, which mm -hmm. is a death knell to a beautiful large tree. Mm. There is a thought in lots of people's minds here that because a tree is big, it's dangerous, and yeah. that the opposite is true. Yeah, I mean, it's it's our home. We have to start taking care of everything, right? Climate action, mm -hmm. we felt this summer. You can feel it today. You can feel it on a hot day. Yeah. It's step in the shade, and step back out in the sure. sunlight. Way. I wish I had a big tree in my front yard. Absolutely. Well, you can, and take care of the ones that you have. Yeah. Um, so the existing uh, development bylaw requires an arborist to assess what's there before it's developed, yeah. and then to ensure that there are a set number of trees per hectare remaining. Yeah. We're not seeing that happen. Yeah, and you know, Indigenous people, that's their ancestors, right? Oh. And you know, they've done DNA, DNA in some trees, and they find salmon DNA. Wow. Wow. Yeah, from animals and just, that's the whole cycle. Like, this is a whole cycle. We have to be careful on where we live. And I, and I think, you know, we have to take action on the local level. And we can. Sure. That's the exciting thing about municipal politics and yeah. municipal government is that it's nimble. Mm -hmm. We actually have the power to effect change that we want yeah. very quickly. We say, oh, well, you know, the province responsibility or it's the federal government mm -hmm. responsibility and it may be but those entities are very um, sludgy they're very thick and yeah. it's difficult for them to implement the change that they'd like mm -hmm. even if they have the political will at the municipal level if we said we would like our trees protected it could be done very quickly yeah you know the uh, the one thing we used to go to myself and my husband was the um, we used to do that rotary uh, garden tour but we also did the um, um, the one up here, Rider Lake Ramble. Rider Lake Ramble. Like it's been a couple years since since we've been, but we did go this year, <clears throat> and it was busy, and it was so good to see some of the same people that were living. There wasn't much of a change. The same neighbors are there, but um, to just be reacquainted uh, with them and to see the amazing um, 
um, gardens that they have up there too, I think uh, is is really nice. Have you have you been on that tour? And I have been. Good. It's, it's always in conflict with a lot of other celebrations mm -hmm. in our community. It's a great time of year. Yeah. But you're right, the iris garden that used to be open yeah. for people to see and the exotic animals on the hobby farm. Yeah, for sure. That's Fresh like shade. the first one, I think, you uh -huh. go up. Uh -huh. <clears throat> they actually had uh, one of those satellites with... Um, um, Elon Musk, right? And they're, oh, they're portable. Starlink. And, yeah, Starlink. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. And so, we, you know, it just gives you a chance to talk about, um, to just kind of break and talk to your neighbors. That's something so. we could need, have more of in our town is better internet connection. Mm -hmm. So because of our varied topography, yep. some of the communities are underserved. And it's yeah. just not fair, especially if they're running a home-based business. Yeah. What an asset to the community. They're not commuters. Sure. <laughs> they're contributing to the to the economy and yet they don't have very good internet yeah. and what about people who are just not well well off enough to afford our expensive internet could sure. we not make that available to I them think like you're free internet there. in the downtown core i totally think you're onto something there like if we had hubs right yeah even people who are in trouble or um you know some of the people that are living in the street they can go to a certain area and they can connect with somebody now that's i, th I think is, is money well spent um, you know, could that be something else you could bring forward then? Definitely. Excellent. I have lots of ideas, lots of dreams. Good, yeah. So I'm just going to give you a chance to just, you know, say a couple things. I know you have, you've got your website from the election last time, but, and it's being updated. Yes. You, you've got your campaign manager doing that as well. But um, tell, tell me some other things that, you know, that you're really passionate about and that maybe you think, you know, is really going to help the city. Climate action is probably yeah. the top one. Mm -hmm. Everybody has that as a priority, and our, our municipality could have it as its priority. Yeah. There are examples of municipalities all around who are doing very exciting things. An example is to lower the speed limit in the downtown core. Mm -hmm. Let's say it was 30 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. Not only is it more pleasant for walkability, it's uh, using far less um, fuel, yeah. and so the drivers are going to save some money, mm -hmm. our environment benefits, and if there are any unfortunate accidents, they're probably going to be way less serious than they were at a higher speed. That's just yeah. one little thing sure. that a municipality can do. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, you know, what other things are there out there that, you know, on that municipal level that, that you think that are missing that, you know, your voice can make a difference? Well, the diversity piece that we talked about already. Um, I, another thing that I'd like to see is listening to staff more. They're really talented professionals doing really good work, but I sometimes think that maybe their hands are constrained. Um, an example is bylaw enforcement. Mm -hmm. Currently, all the bylaws are enforced by complaints. The, that's the only way. That, Reactionary. Yes. Right? So there are a lot mm -hmm. of contraventions that are maybe quite serious mm -hmm. or maybe easy to deal with, but unless there's a complaint about it, they aren't addressed. Yeah. An example would be the very tall fences on some people's front yards. Yeah. That's against the bylaw. You're mm -hmm. only supposed to have a three-foot fence in your front yard. Mm -hmm. Why? I think it's to make it more friendly. I, I don't know the whole rationale, but there is a bylaw there that says it's supposed to be a three-foot fence. Yeah. Well, we see six and eight-foot fences, and we know how that looks. Yeah. It's, it's intimidating, it's not friendly, mm -hmm. and there are concerns. Is there something going on behind that gate? Well, a bylaw officer should have the freedom to check that out if it's a priority. If they have a strategic plan and they say, we're going to address some of, some of these things that really are a problem. Mm -hmm. um, the riparian areas along our sloughs. We treasure our sloughs. Yeah. Oh, but it's a provincial responsibility. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's the city's responsibility sure. to enforce the regulations. And we don't unless there's a complaint. And yeah. how do I know? Because I've been a complainer. Good. And the yeah. city's been well, very responsive. Yeah. But maybe they have better priorities than answering diverse complaints. Well, you know, we all have to be, you know, responsible citizens, right? We, well, all, we all have to play our part. We shouldn't so. be afraid of mm -hmm. asking, is this okay? I have a concern about this. Could you check it out? For sure. Yeah. And then on the other side is the the bio law enforcement officers that the pros they know the bylaws they've been trained 
they should be able to have the freedom to not put up blinders when they see something that they think is a concern. They should be able to go back to the office, note it, and see, you know, we've got a pattern here that's a problem. Let's make a yeah. plan to address it. Yeah, and like being a counselor, like nobody expects you to know everything, but, um, you know, you know a little about a lot of things. And that, <laughs> that's like actually, like I think it was Sam who first said that, and I thought, hmm, well, you're kind of right on that one, right? You know, because you do get exposure and you, you get a chance to, um, you know, sort of trade ideas and stuff with other counselors in different cities around the province. And when you do go to meetings and, and we want that reflected, those new ideas sort of brought I would back, say that's so. my strength is working mm -hmm. in a team and brainstorming Great. and then developing a plan. Those yeah. are the things that I love working on boards. So the Fraser Valley Watersheds Coalition, the Great Blue Heron Nature Reserve Society, my church's council. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love working with yeah. this group of people who have the same objectives. Sure. We define our objectives and then we come up with great ideas and then we figure out which ones we could actually accomplish yeah. and then we set and do the work. I really like that. Yeah, like, you know, you know, we're not going to cure cancer, we're going to do anything, but we can solve a lot of the problems. We can prevent cancer. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, sure, we can healthy lifestyles, yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah, so just, you know, and the last thing is, like, the health of our community. Do you think we're healthier as a community now than we were, you know, oh, last we're, time we're, we ran? We're always getting better. Mm -hmm. And kudos to our current municipal government mm -hmm. doing a bang up job. It's hard, but with more voters, if more people came out, I think that that the local government would be galvanized to accomplish so much more. We have so much wealth. We have so yeah. many resources. We almost have a responsibility greater than other municipalities because we have it all. Let's mm -hmm. do something with it. I love what Willow Reeshelt said at a Women's Day March. She said, Chilliwack, that's the name that when people say it, they think of that progressive city. And mm. I share that vision. Good, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's what we're striving for, right? Yeah. We want to be the best. Yeah. Yeah, why not? The, um, yeah, I think that's great. I, you know, um, if you have anything to say out there, can people contact you? Say I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, a mom who's who's really concerned. I've got some time. I would like to be a city councillor. Is that going to fit in my schedule? And what's the culture like? I just want to know if it's a friendly place. Like, what would you say to somebody who's thinking of running, who, who just needs maybe that little bit of encouragement to uh, to put their name forward? Well, I haven't actually served, mm -hmm. but I've sat in on a lot of council meetings. Yeah. Um, so the meeting setting is very cordial and very professional um, and productive. Mm -hmm. um, I found that to be so. As um, the campaigning process is very personal, you're mm. almost isolated. I wouldn't call it a competition. We're seeking a position. If you were hired, being hired for a job, you're not competing with the other person for the position, you're selling yourself. You're hoping that, that you're the one that they want. If yeah. they don't want you, I mean, if the voters say, oh gosh, Deborah's message is not resonating. Well, I get that, that's fair. But mm -hmm. if you didn't vote and you wish that I got in, that would be crummy, right? Um, be. I've always worked in a male-dominated workplace being a forester. Mm -hmm. So I have to admit, sometimes I'm a bit numbed to the sensitivities of what might be going around. That being said, the, the people on council right now have been very collegial. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed the campaigning process. We worked together, we shared our concerns, and we argued over our sign locations. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the time commitment is what you choose to make it. The hardest part, I would say, is getting elected. Yeah. I think it, the job itself, if you like governance, if you like administration, if you care for your community, if you've um, got a wide circle of acquaintances mm -hmm. that you really feel that you that you um, represent, then you, you should do it. You you owe that to your friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, one last thing, I'd like to give you a little gift. <clears throat> In our Métis culture, we have uh, sashing our warriors, and this is um, this is part of that campaign. And I really do believe you are one of the warriors out there. You know, you really have a voice, you have something to say. So I'd like to um, give this to you, uh, wear it in pride. Um, you know, if you're ever at an event or whatever, it's got a great story. And you can actually rip it in half and give it to somebody else. So you can also sash one of your favorite warriors. But um, I do truly believe that, um, you know, you've had an amazing career in this city and, and you're an up and comer and uh, I certainly hope people get out and vote because we definitely need yours and, and more women voices, um, you know, making those those hard decisions in this city. So I'd like to present that to you.
Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's very kind. And I good really luck. Do. I'm going to be watching. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you next round.